What happens when you take one of the most streamed songs of all time, say, Drake's One Dance, and record it onto the oldest format of recorded music, a wax cylinder? Okay, stop. Not great. But fast forward to today, and a lot has changed. We no longer really own music. We just stream it. Streaming is almost entirely responsible for getting the industry back on track. But the question is now, can streaming take it back to its heyday after fundamentally changing the way we consume it? Maybe. But first, let's look at how we got here. So, back to that phonograph. This was the start of it all. Mary had a little lamb, its feet were quite as slow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Thomas Edison's invention meant that for the first time, people could listen to music from the comfort of their homes, and it could also be shared and sold. As the phonograph's popularity grew, a few enterprising Americans came together to form what is now known today as Columbia Records. Over the next five decades, the phonograph took different forms, from this cylinder shape to flat discs, until finally being replaced by In 1948, Columbia Records introduced the long play, allowing for multiple songs on one record. Vinyl remained the dominant recording format for most of the 20th century. Go, Johnny, go, go. Everybody let's roll. The ring of fire. And as rock and roll, blues, and country kicked off, sales boomed and albums sold out. But by the late 50s, new technology would again rock the industry. When first introduced, the RCA magnetic tape wasn't a game changer. But being able to record music on a smaller device for greater portability inspired a series of innovations. Adoption by car makers ensured a quick rise in the tape's popularity. And by the late 60s, most cars offered eight track players. For the first time, driving down the interstate and listening to, say, the Beatles was possible. Road trips got a whole lot more exciting. But it would be Sony that changed the game with the iconic. Yes. With the Walkman, listeners could take music with them whenever and wherever. Around the same time, MTV launched giving record labels an opportunity to market their music. You made me feel. For artists, that meant it wasn't just about the song anymore, but the ability to offer a whole artistic package, and that became a big focus for icons like Madonna and Michael Jackson. But with the rise of the digital era came the unraveling of the cassette tape. Thanks to booming CD sales, the music industry partied like it was, yeah, 1999. Profits peaked that year, with 14.6 billion in sales in the US alone. There was Nirvana and Tupac, the Spice Girls, Oasis, Backstreet Boys, Britney, Mariah, and Selena. Unfortunately, you can only party like it's 1999 for so long. Software like Napster paved the way for a new era of piracy. CD sales plummeted as more and more people logged on. Free music didn't sit well with the music industry, and they fought long and expensive legal battles, eventually seeing some sites shut down. But the damage had already been done. Sharing music over the internet was here to stay. I've got an iPod here. And true, with the introduction of the iPod, and MP3 players, the industry did see a boost from digital downloads. But it wasn't enough to make up for the dwindling physical format sales, and artists were forced to tour more to bring in the dough. Meanwhile, streaming 
was just getting started. Some companies introduced subscription models with limited music libraries, while others, like Pandora, operated as internet radio stations with ads. But the breakthrough came in 2011. Swedish startup Spotify managed to do what the others could not, license a vast library of music. Instead of buying and owning songs and albums, we started listening to ads or paying monthly fees in exchange for access to, essentially, all the music in the world. Over the following years, there was an explosion of services. Artists and labels now count on these services for the bulk of their profits from recorded music, while many argue that artists are not being paid enough. Although streaming is responsible for huge revenue growth in the industry, tech companies aren't yet making money from it. And it's still not clear how they will, as they continue to prioritize growth over profits. Plus, if history is any clue, it won't be long before new technology shakes everything up again. <laughs>